Hello, future lifesavers. As student ODPs, you're about to embark on an incredible journey into the world of surgery. One of the first and most important skills you'll learn is intravenous, or IV, cannulation. It might seem a bit daunting at first, but trust me, with practice, it'll become second nature. Think of cannulation as your gateway to patient care. It's like opening a direct line to deliver essential medications, fluids, and even blood transfusions when needed. Pretty cool, right? Cannulation is a core skill for ODPs. You'll use it every single day in the operating room, helping to ensure your patients are safe and comfortable throughout their surgical journey. So, are you ready to become a cannulation pro? Let's get started. Imagine this, a patient needs emergency surgery. They might be scared, possibly in pain. The surgical team needs to act fast. This is where IV access becomes a literal lifeline. IV cannulation allows us to deliver anesthesia swiftly and safely, ensuring the patient is completely unaware during the procedure. But it's not just about anesthesia. We can also give powerful pain relief, keeping the patient comfortable throughout their time in the operating room. And that's not all. IV access is crucial for maintaining the patient's fluid balance, especially during long operations. We can quickly replenish fluids lost due to blood loss or dehydration, keeping those vital signs stable. In emergencies, we can even administer life-saving medications or blood transfusions through the IV line. Before you even think about picking up a cannula, let's talk about the tools of the trade. Just like a surgeon needs their scalpel, you need the right equipment to perform a successful cannulation. First things first, you'll need a cannula itself. These come in different sizes or gauges, with smaller gauges for thinner veins and larger gauges for bigger veins or rapid fluid administration. Then there's the tourniquet, your best friend when it comes to finding those sometimes elusive veins. Don't forget the antiseptic wipes for cleaning the area, gauze pads for dressing the cannula, and a sharps container for safe disposal. Preparation is key. Always wash your hands thoroughly and gather all your equipment before starting. Check the patient's notes for any allergies or previous issues with cannulation. Explain the procedure to the patient and get their consent. Remember, a calm and confident approach can make all the difference. Okay, time to put those skills into action. Whether you're a beginner or just brushing up, this step-by-step -step guide will help you master IV cannulation with confidence. Cannulation might seem tricky at first, but with practice you'll be a pro in no time. Remember, every expert started as a novice, so don't worry if it feels overwhelming at first. Let's break down the process into easy-to-follow steps, so you can approach each attempt with clarity and calm. First, locate a suitable vein. Take your time and assess both arms, as some veins are easier to access than others. Apply the tourniquet above the elbow and ask the patient to clench their fist. This helps the veins become more prominent and easier to find. Look for a bouncy, prominent vein on the back of the hand or forearm. Next, prepare the site by gathering all your supplies and ensuring everything is within reach. Once you've found your target, clean the area thoroughly with an antiseptic wipe, working your way outwards in a circular motion. Allow the skin to dry completely to reduce infection risk. Then insert the cannula. Hold the cannula at a shallow angle, bevel up, and gently pierce the skin. Steady hands and a calm approach make a big difference here. You should see a flashback of blood in the cannula hub. That's how you know you're in. Pause for a moment to confirm placement before moving on. Now secure the cannula. Advance the cannula slightly, then hold it steady while withdrawing the needle. Take care not to move the cannula too much to avoid vein injury. Dispose of the needle safely in the sharps container. Safety is always a top priority for both you and your patient. After that, connect and secure. Make sure all connections are tight to prevent leaks or dislodgement. Attach the IV tubing to the cannula hub and flush with saline solution to ensure patency. Watch for any swelling or resistance as you flush. Secure the cannula with a transparent dressing and label it clearly. Remember, practice makes perfect. Each attempt builds your skill and confidence. Don't be discouraged if you miss a few attempts. It's all part of the learning process and every try is a step forward. Even seasoned pros have off days. What matters is your commitment to keep improving and learning from each experience. If you're struggling, don't hesitate to ask a senior colleague for guidance. Support and teamwork are key in healthcare, so never be afraid to reach out for help. 
Now that you've mastered the art of cannulation, let's talk about the fluids we deliver through these lifelines. Understanding the different types of IV fluids and their uses is essential for any aspiring ODP. The most common type you'll encounter is normal saline, also known as 0.9% sodium chloride. It's like giving the body a refreshing drink of salt water, helping to replace lost fluids and electrolytes. Another popular choice is Hartman's solution, which is similar to normal saline but contains additional electrolytes like potassium and calcium. For patients who need a quick energy boost, we often use dextrose solutions, which contain sugar. And in cases of severe blood loss, colloids like albumin or gelifusine can help to rapidly expand blood volume. Choosing the right fluid depends on the individual patient's needs and the surgical procedure. Even with the best technique and plenty of practice, cannulation isn't always smooth sailing. Sometimes, unexpected challenges can arise, even for experienced healthcare professionals. You might encounter problems such as a blocked cannula, infiltration, or phlebitis. These complications can happen at any time during the procedure or while the IV is in place. Don't panic. Staying calm and methodical is key. Here's how to handle these common issues and ensure patient safety. If the cannula becomes blocked, it might be due to a kink in the tubing, a clot in the cannula, or the patient's movement causing the cannula to shift. Blockages can interrupt treatment and cause discomfort. Check the tubing for any visible kinks or obstructions and gently flush the cannula with saline to try and clear the blockage. Always do this slowly to avoid causing further complications. If flushing doesn't resolve the issue, you may need to recite the cannula at a new location to restore proper IV access and prevent further problems. Infiltration occurs when the cannula tip comes out of the vein and fluid leaks into the surrounding tissue, which can be uncomfortable and even harmful if not addressed quickly. You'll notice swelling, coolness and discomfort at the site. The area may also look pale or feel firm to the touch, and the patient might report a stinging sensation. Stop the infusion immediately, remove the cannula, and apply a warm compress to help the body absorb the leaked fluid and reduce discomfort. Phlebitis is an inflammation of the vein, often caused by irritation from the cannula or the infused medication. It can develop gradually or appear suddenly. The area will be red, tender and warm to the touch. Patients may also complain of pain or a burning sensation along the vein. Again, stop the infusion, remove the cannula and apply a warm compress to soothe the area and promote healing. Remember, if you're ever unsure about anything or encounter a problem you can't manage, don't hesitate to ask for help from a senior colleague. Teamwork and communication are essential for safe and effective patient care. Placing the cannula is just the first step. Monitoring and documenting every detail are crucial for ensuring patient safety and providing continuity of care. After cannulation, regularly check the site for any signs of redness, swelling, leakage or discomfort. Ensure the dressing is clean, dry and intact. Note the date and time of cannulation, the cannula gauge and site, and any fluids or medications administered. Any problems encountered and actions taken should also be clearly documented. Remember, meticulous documentation is vital for communication between healthcare professionals and provides a comprehensive record of the patient's care. It also helps to identify any trends or potential issues early on, ensuring timely intervention and the best possible outcome for your patient. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of your cannulation crash course. Completing this training is a huge step forward in your journey as a healthcare professional, and you should be proud of your progress so far. You're now well on your way to becoming a cannulation champion. With each attempt, your confidence and skill will only grow stronger. Let's quickly recap the essential points to remember before you head into practice. Cannulation is a vital skill for ODPs. It allows us to administer essential fluids, medications and blood products, ensuring patient safety during surgery and other critical procedures. Preparation is key. Always gather all your equipment in advance, explain the procedure clearly to the patient, and follow strict aseptic technique throughout to minimize infection risk. Master the step-by-step -step technique. Practice makes perfect. Use simulation labs and training arms to refine your skills before working with real patients. Don't be afraid to ask for help if you're struggling. 
Learning from experienced colleagues is invaluable, and teamwork is essential in healthcare. Understand the different types of IV fluids. Each one serves a unique purpose in patient care. Each fluid has specific properties and uses, so always choose wisely based on the patient's needs and the clinical situation. Be prepared for challenges. Know how to identify and manage common cannulation problems like blockages, infiltration and phlebitis. Quick action can prevent complications. Monitoring and documentation are essential. Regularly check the cannula site for signs of infection or complications, and meticulously document all details for patient safety and continuity of care. Remember, cannulation is a skill that takes time and practice to master. Every attempt is a learning opportunity, so keep practicing and stay patient with yourself. Be patient with yourself, don't be afraid to ask for help, and always prioritize your patient's safety and comfort. With dedication and compassion, you'll become a skilled and confident practitioner. You've got this.